Hello everybody and welcome to Dungeons and Drams. Today we're going to be trying something that I just had this thought like literally 10 minutes ago and I tried it out and it seemed to work really well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that we're going to be doing a one shot and more specifically I'm going to pretend to be a player. Now my DM says hey we want to run this one shot it's going to be a heist and you know you can pick whatever character you want whatever class you want and just bring them to the table level five and let's go. So I have decided hey I kind of want to play a fighter. And in future videos, we're going to do other classes as well. We might use the same scenario. We might not. We'll have to see. Let me know in the comments if you care. But here's what we're going to do for the initial prompt. I'm a player who's going to be playing in a one-shot Dungeons & Dragons adventure. I've been told that the adventure will be centered around a heist. I will provide the character's name, sex, race, class, and either I'll give you a subclass, or I'll tell you generally what I want my role to be. Again, not assuming that the person knows anything about the class. I would like you to pick uh, to create a character at level 5 and pick a subclass and starting equipment. So this makes it so that everything's off your hands. Obviously this entire step could be switched. Most players are going to have an idea what they want, but I don't want to assume all of my players know every subclass available to them. So we're going to start off with this, and when we submit this uh, prompt, it's going to end up telling us that it understands blah blah blah. That sounds like a fun adventure, please give me that information. Okay, so. Now you could do whatever you want. Now my experience has been that if you have somebody play in a one shot with you, generally they're going to have an idea what they want to play as, um, or maybe they have a name in mind or a concept. So I don't want to get too much into this. This isn't the important part of the video, but it is important for the prompt to understand what I'm trying to teach it. So my character's name is Hank the Tank Henderson. He's a human fighter. My role will be that of the muscle in case things go wrong in the heist. I want the ability to subdue, but not necessarily kill any enemies I encounter. I think you could see how that doesn't really give too much. It's kind of letting ChatGPT tell me what I should do. Now, if I submit that, it likes my choices, which it should. It's, you know, I'm the boss. <laughs> but in this case, it's going to tell me that, yeah, you know, a fighter makes sense. And let's take the Battlemaster fighter because there are certain maneuvers that a Battlemaster could take that will help to more subdue or control the battlefield than some of the other subclasses. So I like that as a concept. And Battlemaster in general is a really good one to start off with or, you know, have be a campaign long class or subclass. All right. So basically, you know, hey, Frank, uh, Hank the Tank Henderson. Harder to say than you'd think. Go ahead and challenge yourself. Human fighter, level five, battle master. Cool. Ability sto scores, standard array or point by method. Um, basically, it's telling you that you want, it's telling you where you want to put your points, which is really good because it doesn't just say, hey, put, you know, the, make these your stats because that's not how most people are going to roll their character. Um, but it is telling you which ones to concentrate on. So it still lends a bit of that randomness to it, which is great. Uh, it does tell you which skills to make, you know, take proficiency in or concentrate on. Athletics, intimidation, and perception. Uh, for physical feats and grappling, to play the role of muscle with intimidation. That makes sense. And perception, useful for spotting traps and hidden uh, enemies. So that will all be useful. Battlemaster maneuvers. So it's suggesting that you take the trip attack, the grappling strike, and the disarming attack. All of those make perfect sense for the role that I've told it I wanted to do. Now it gives you a list of equipment that you want. Um... It's saying that you should take a club, and uh, when I did this previously, it actually specified, hey, you want to flavor your club to be a sap, basically some just whack people in the back of the head. Um, heavy armor for maximum protection. Uh, it had suggested chainmail in the previous version of this. I think that either one is fine. Um, shield for added defense, basic adventurer's kit, and manacles for subduing and, and restraining people, which makes perfect sense as well feats now it's suggesting that i take the tavern brawler which will help me in unarmed combat and grappling that is a very logical choice all right so it's telling me to customize this background um, but also just in general some some additional things that you want to care about cool so we've got our character now here is kind of the meat of this episode I want to instruct ChatGPT to create me a workflow that as a brand new player who has no idea what I'm doing with this character, I can read through this and have a general idea of how the class and subclass are supposed to work. So now I would like you to design a workflow that will help me make decisions on my turn. Take into account a variety of situations that I may find myself in. In the case of combat, suggest instances where it makes sense to use my special abilities rather than simply attacking. Assume I'm very new to playing a fighter. Now, this same prompt could be used with any class here. So this is 
kind of generic, which is really nice. Now, while this is generating, I just want to tell everybody I am putting all of the prompts now on my Patreon for free. Um, so the general idea is, you know, go over there, check it out, but I can update them in the future. It will make it a little easier for me to um, maybe add some additional detail. Obviously, the description of YouTube it isn't feature rich, right? But if I want to add some images, if I want to add some stuff, Patreon makes sense. And all of that will always be free. Uh, as it has been since we've started the channel. All right, uh, so creating a decision-making workflow is uh, in various situations, especially combat, great way, blah, blah, blah. You know, one thing I don't love about ChatGPT, although I kind of don't know how it would do it differently, is it always is complimentary, and I think that's fine, except it's kind of like, I get it, thanks for telling me that I'm awesome and my idea is awesome. I don't know, it feels a little strange. I guess it's better than saying, like, that's a stupid idea, <laughs> but whatever. All right. So um, it's going to break it down into combat, exploration, and social interaction. So it understands the three pillars. That's really good. Uh, so the combat workflow. First, you're going to assess the situation. Number of enemies. Are you outnumbered or facing a single powerful foe? Enemy type, allies, position. I'll paste this all down in that Patreon as well so that you don't have to try to pause this video. Um, so you decide on your action, your attack. If within reach, use melee attacks. Consider using a maneuver if it could provide a tactical advantage. Example, trip attack to knock an enemy prone, making them easier for melee hit, uh, allies to hit. Now, it does go into the special abilities and when you would use each one, which I think is very good, and that's kind of what I wanted. If I were a wizard, and we will do an episode on wizards as well, especially if you guys tell me that you like this concept, um, it would make some more sense to have, you know, you might have 10, 15 spells that you could choose from, and that could be very useful for a workflow. All right, so trip attack, um, use when facing a strong enemy to give allies an advantage, Makes sense. Knock them down, beat them up. Grappling strike, disarming attack, and when to use them. So it tells you that you want to focus on protecting your allies by putting yourself in between enemies and weaker party members, remembering that enemies can't move through people unless, you know, you're huge, of course. But you get that. Use maneuvers to control enemy movement, um, and then it tells you to move if you need to, or use items if you need to. Execute your action, and then use your bonus actions. So it does have a good mix of both I have no idea what I'm doing versus here's when to use your specific skills. And I think that's exactly what I would want. If I sat somebody down at a table who had basically never played before, they might be embarrassed to ask some of these questions and it's good to have this on a worksheet. All right, exploration workflow, uh, basically scout the area because you're gonna be kind of beefy and maybe you can take a hit from a trap a little better than some of your squishier people. All right, gather information, investigate objects of interest, use perception to detect anything unusual, interact with the environment, move or break objects if needed, use athletics for physical tasks. This is, again, kind of obvious, but still good to see. Um, things that people don't always, you know, tell me if you're a DM, like, do your players just never do anything? <laughs> you know, like I look at a, I look at a map and I'm like, man, I would just like, get up on that box. You know, I had a player in the campaign who just loved to get up on tables and I loved that. Um, but it's, it's funny when people don't really use the environment and it's an interesting thing to remind them to use the environment. So this is good. I like this social interaction. Um, choose your approach you're going to be good at intimidation uh and you could support other party members who are good at persuasion or deception because if you throw your help action in there that could help uh engage and react blah 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 all right general tips always consider the objective of the encounter is it to defeat all enemies protect someone escape or something else communicate with your team oh my gosh i wish i could just plaster that right on the page um, and beware of your resources, adjust the plan to the situation. Okay, so some of this is fairly generic, and that's also okay. But aside from that, I think this is great. As a level 5 fighter, there aren't a ton of things that you can do. Um, did it say anything about your extra attack? That was one thing I didn't see. Extra, all right, attack. Uh, strength, blah, 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 disarming attack. Um, interesting, it actually... Consider using a maneuver. It didn't actually say anything about having your second attack, which at level five you do. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so that's that's good. You might even want to run this a couple of times to make sure that it gets things, especially if you're creating this as a DM. That is useful. I mean, and it kind of goes to show that it's not always perfect. So either way, this would have saved me a ton of time. So there's a little bonus thing here that I want to do. If you're using ChatGPT4, which is going to be the paid version or potentially the next free version, this is something that has recently become available. Could you generate an image of this character? 
I can't say I love this one quite as much as some of the other ones, but in this case, uh, Hank the Tank, you know, this is fine. Um, one thing that you could also do is you could ask it to tell you what the prompt that it used to generate that image is, so that if you want to, you could copy this prompt and switch some things around. Like maybe, you know, this guy has no hair, maybe you do want some hair, although, you know, no hair is clearly superior. Um, I look just like this guy, right? <laughs> so... Uh, you could copy the prompt down here, put it in a mid-journey or wherever you want, Dolly, and uh, you could adjust it to whatever you want. If not, just you know, use it as a way to learn how to prompt better. This episode is all about creating that workflow, and you could adjust that workflow to be in whatever kind of format you want. You could make it less generic. If you have level 10s, it will look a lot different than level 1s or level 5s. And in general, I do think it's worth reminding your players of some of those rudimentary things like explore your location, concentrate on the skills that you're proficient in, etc, etc. So, thank you guys all for joining me here on Dungeons & Drams. I hope you had a great rest of your night, and cheers. <laughs>